All right. And so I'm going to, I made a very, very simple agenda for today. Um, I'm going to make it viewable to all of you and share it at on the chat just so that you can have a, um, like a root or a, a tree to go back to, a structure to go back to for all the information we might share with you today. It'll, it's just going to be like a, a sheet. But let me um, pop it into the chat real quick. And I like to use it to just help me navigate from place to place. So. And what it has on it, the one main resource, which a lot of today will probably be um, providing you a lot of resources, but you will have access to the location of them. Like Emily has a website that will be coming out. If not, it might have been shared with you in parts by your department team. Um, a lot of the things we share with you today, you'll have access to them. I just, I wanted to give you at least the new teacher slideshow so that you can go through all the slides um, if you want to look through them. The slides we'll use today. I just took out some of the slides from our actual meeting. It was an all day meeting. We included CTE teachers. Um, so actually, do we have any CTE teachers with us today? If you are, um, so no, okay. All right, so that's my little sheet. And usually I will sign in, but I'm just gonna get in this. It makes it so simple. Okay, ESL, that's great. Let's, I talk to you. All right. <laughs> okay. So what I had on there at first um, is our back box activity. So instead of us all introducing ourselves and talking and taking um, you know, five minutes each to introduce ourselves. Um, I just called it a chatterbox. So what you're all going to do is in the chat box, you're going to type answers to the first question first. So when I say go, I want you to all list the school that you are coming from and how many years of teaching that you've gone. And this is for me to collect a little baseline info before we start training. Um, but how many, um, what school are you coming from and how many years of teaching do you have? Go. Ali, this is in the chat or on the document? In the chat box. And then everyone can read each other's and then I like to kind of scan it to see, snapshot of my audience, see where we're at. It's some technique I picked up from ODE during COVID. <laughs> They're like, do the chat box polls. All right. It gives me a, a gauge kind of of where our group's at. So we have a range. Okay. Some people that have some experience, some brand new people. That's awesome. And then the next question for Chatterbox is, what do you need to know today? What's your diet, your your question that you just need to know? I want to make sure if there's something that you just really have to get an answer to, that we at least give that to you today. Because we have a lot of information we could provide, but we don't want to give you too much. We just want to try to fit what you need. So go ahead and answer that if you're ready. What do you what do you really need to know? What do you need to take home today? And go ahead and go if you've got that. So this is great. I'm looking at um, some of these things coming through. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I mean, I love the that I excel for ESL. So I'm writing these down as we go. Thank you. Yeah, I put in that I need to know what your needs are. And so does Emily, so we can help you. 
And if, if you have nothing, you know, feel free. Okay, some dazzle help. I'm not so great at wait time, so I will wait a little longer. <laughs> okay. And Emily, if you're taking notes, go ahead. I know you are. Um, she's. I can see her writing. <laughs> Dazzle, we need to make sure we share out the video from Dazzle Orientation with this group. We have an entire video for you all to watch on Dazzle. And it's very easy and simple to go through. Um, it's about 45 minutes long. Because I don't want to go into detail about Dazzle, but I will show you. There's two slides about it. Okay, but we'll send the video for sure. That's so helpful to know. Um, okay, anything else on there, M, that you see? It's super small on my screen, so I'm trying to. Okay. Awesome. Well, I mean, Mr. Ryan said Clever and um, Google Classroom. Now, um, in Kenya, I know she had students. She's probably the best person to ask about that. Um, it has been quite, you know, a, a runaround, clever, dazzle, IXL, and puzzle, some of these programs, right? So I'll just say that I have two metaphors that I have found that I like to describe this, right? Clever is like the doorway that everything is going through. So I excel, Google Classroom, Ed Puzzle, Brain Minds, right? And it's also a one-way road that starts in Dazzle. So we are finding things that are kind of like not the way that they should be entered for Clever to interpret them correctly and then push them out to these other programs. Allie and I have been working a lot on IXL, right? Um, the Clever part is not really what we've been doing, but we're going to try to find you some answers. So um, maybe, Mr. Ryan, we can talk afterwards or some other time about like specific things that we've been troubleshooting with Clever. So I will, we will do our best to address that. Not like right now, but um, we'll do our best. And then maybe you can help us problem solve on the back end, like after we get through some of the general stuff. So thank you for that. And we, um, like, we appreciate people's patience so much with all of that. And please understand it's as frustrating for us um, as, you know, I know you have students in your face and you're trying to help them while troubleshooting with tech, but we know that we did ask, and you guys are new, but we have a lot of things changing this year, and we know it's a lot for um, teachers, so don't overly stress yourself about, like, if Allie comes in and asks how something's going, I'm not asking to see if you have been using it and if, you know, you're I'm not asking for that reason. I'm asking to see if it's working, if you need help with it, if there's troubleshooting we need to do to help you with it. We want to, we know that we're just, we know we're in the development stage of all these things. So we're understanding on where you guys might be with tools as well. So don't feel like when I come in and ask about something that it's an I gotcha. Like, oh, I have I haven't been using a puzzle yet. She's going to be so mad at me. No, I'm trying to see if it works. I totally get it. Okay, so just know that for me. We're, we're so here to support you. And so is Amy Kenyon. She's our technology um, guru. She's on the call videotaping for us. Um, raise your hand if you've seen a tech talk come through on a, in your email. You could, if you have the chat hand thing. Okay, I see a live hand, Josh. Cool. Um, if you other folks wouldn't mind putting your face on there, it would be easier to work with you, but it don't, you don't have to, but yeah, Amy, um, she sends great resources. So do not ignore them. Literally. She sent a video on how to do something in Excel this morning and it's a basic thing. It's so helpful. It's very, it's a simplified process tool. It'll just. I just pay attention to this. All right. What what do you mean by text talk? So she sends out, and it might be based on your email, okay? But she will send out an email every Thursday with a tip. And it's always something timely and kind of pertinent to what we're doing. You know, so we've been rolling out IXL. Her tip was an IXL, you know, how to navigate on the dashboard for today. So... And so it's a YouTube video that she sends out with a tip. And it's just an email, a mass email that goes out. They're short, easy to watch, 
So, yeah, don't ignore them. All I right. just have a chance to watch it. Yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> I didn't see. I'm not. I got you, Ewing. There should be a term for that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and present the slides and I'm going to do my best to not take up too much time. All right. And it's on Amy's slide as we speak. It's funny. Okay. okay. You want me to talk? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll um, prompt you here. Hold on one second. Okay. So expectations, this was from the training that we had. I just wanted to leave this slide in there as a reminder for you guys. One of the very, very most important things you need to do with your students in your brand new classroom is go ahead and set some basic expectations. Be very explicit and clear with your students on how you want them to behave. Um, I've heard what you permit, you promote. So, you know, by not responding or having rules or expectations, you might be promoting behaviors that you don't want to take place in your lab. So just be simple and clear with your expectations. Um, those were the expectations from the meeting. So that's that. And if you have questions or comments, you can pop them into the chat or re raise your hand. and. Emily, if you wouldn't mind telling me, um, because I don't see the meeting when I'm looking at my slides. I can only look at one screen. So tell me if you see someone that I miss with a question. I certainly will. Thank you, Ellen. Thanks. Um, okay. This was um, a Kahoot. And I, again, I left this in there so that you guys would have links. Um, we just did a fun Kahoot challenge. Um, but if you didn't know already, you all should have a Kahoot um, account. So we did buy the premium um, Kahoot program for all of our teachers to use this year. Um, and, you know, there are links on how to get to it. Um, Ms. Kenyon can help you connect her. If you want to share quickly, is there a quick, easy thing to say? I just put it in the chat, Allie. So um, okay. I, yesterday I was kind of starting my, like, who has Kahoot and who doesn't. So your department chairs um, got an email from me. It was like, who on your team wants Kahoot, right? So we did purchase 127 licenses for the company and we figured just like academic teachers, but I have had a lot of um, career technical teachers and even some family advocates or people that are working with students in more of a social emotional way, but like doing classes um, that have asked for it. So. Um, we want to make sure that we give our academic teachers access first because that's really the group that we um, thought about when we purchased the Kahoot stuff. But if, you know, if someone's going to use it, I don't want to just deny them a license. If someone's not going to use it, I don't want to force it on them, right? So if you want access to the premium Kahoot that we purchased, just email me. And I send you a little invitation and it pops up in your email. So awesome. put me an email in the chat email me and I will send you a list or I will, I will send you the link. Yep. Thank you for that. No, that's awesome. Um, we have a Kahoot challenge monthly, so it's a tool we use universally. Um, and that monthly Kahoot goes out to all the schools during the same two, three days. And we try to get as many participants as possible. And I'm not sure about our record, but the first Kahoot was last week and they had over 600 participants. Um, which is pretty awesome. We have close to 4,000 students that we serve across the state. So 650 is not so bad, actually. Um, all right, so this Padlet I also left in here. It's a really awesome resource. All the questions people ask during our training and all the information and resources that were shared, um, I'm just showing it to you real quick. If you guys open this link, it is, it's just a good springboard for you to access a lot of information and, and other resources. So the slides are right here embedded and you can even see what questions all the people asked, which I learn a lot from other people's questions, I've realized. So if that helps you, I wanted to provide it for you. All right.
right. So, Amy, introduce yourself, my dear. Hi, hey. I'm I'm Amy. I'm 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 here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm popping back and forth. Um, I am the lead teacher at Frederick Douglass High School, um, and I am also the educational technology coach for Oakmont. Um, I am a, a teacher, I am a writer, I am a cat mom, so I have pictures in there of my cats and my husband um, and my staff and of the tech tips that I do and my camper because I was camping a lot this summer. So there you have it. Oh, and my joke was, what's the difference between a cat and a comma? <laughs> <laughs> Emily's yeah. giving clues. <laughs> a cat has a a cat has claws at the end of its paws, and a sentence, a comma, uh, a comma has a clause after its paws. <laughs> That's it's been a long way, day. <laughs> too much for me. <laughs> All right, thank you, Amy. She has some resources, though. She's super happy to help all the time, and I couldn't do my job without her. So this is Amy Canyon, and I'm so jealous of her camper. But my kids make fun of those and call them glampers. But hey, ever floats your boat. Um, Amy, there you go. Emily. <laughs> Oh, hi. Um, yeah, so this is my slide that I put together. Those are my two babies in the middle. Um, my son Aiden just turned seven. So that actually, that picture is about a year old. We went to um, North Carolina last year for vacation. So my son Aiden is seven. He just turned seven in September. And my daughter Isabel's four. Um, she just found a pair of scissors and cut her hair two days ago. So it's longer in that picture than it is right now. <laughs> Um, anyway, I love yoga and walking in the woods and, um, I have two black cats, so that's one of them and I love to read. So there's my, my picture. There's Emily and, um, all right, this is mine. Uh, mine's a little while and, um, I won't go through all my sig figs. I had these numbers, um, and I, I love Van Morrison. I went to Muskingum. I was, you know, these are a few weird things about me. I was a science teacher, if you are wondering. So that's my background. I did that for about seven years before I began um, coaching. So as an academic coach. But if anyone knows where our, do all the bad rainbows go, pop it in the chat for me. Allie, I told this joke in Mr. Zito's room today because he's oh. really funny and he was telling jokes. And so I told this joke today. So I forgot that it was in here. You're who, anyone know the answer? I'll give you five fun points if you're the first one. Mr. Ryan got it, but we, there's more. You're, but wait, there's more. I can't see the chat. It's oh. not really scrolling up all that much. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Well, Mr. Ryan was present at the August event. Man, <laughs> he already saw the answer. So there's one other connect. Do you remember that is more? There is more. So yes, yeah, so all the bad rainbows go to Prism because they have a lot of time to reflect. So there you go. I love science and random science. Bad jokes. I think bad jokes work really well in the classroom. Like Emily was just saying. It is a very fun technique to pop one onto your board every day. And maybe kids will ask you about it. Like maybe you don't even tell them. They might say, well, what is that on your board? But I'm a very random, I like putting random objects, random words on my board, just for kids to end up discovering and then asking me about. So I think it's good to be direct about what you're putting in your room and, and bring it to their attention. But I also think it's real important for little discoveries to appear in your room as well. Um, and foster some of that discovery learning. So there's an example of how you can incorporate that. Just pop a random object on your table every day. See who asks you about it. You might have a lot of really, really good academic conversations that come just from putting, you know, a rock on your desk. So that's that. I think it's also an awesome thing to do um, to have your students create a slide for themselves. And that's partly why we do these for us. I don't, you know, we're not trying to just talk about ourselves all day. 
it's more of an example, something you should do with your students. So make sure that you get to know them. They make a slide that explains themselves. Maybe that's a cool activity they can do for some purpose points. So there's a, another example for you. All right. And I'm sorry, Mr. Um, or Curtis. I, I don't know that I can give you any money for that. We'll have to make it work a little harder. I'll have to do a different joke. I don't know. I know you remember. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you want to go through a couple of these slides? Do you mind? Um, so some of our Oakmont, um, just introducing you to the, the company. Yeah, I don't mind. Um, okay. I'll just tell you, I'll just say next when you can switch because you're running. The, oh, the yep. yep. So, um, this was a chart on graduates. And I believe that at the training in August, Wiggins actually had updated numbers that are even higher than that. But I think the goal is that, or like the point of the slide is to see that we have like really been moving up in graduates every year. So that's the end goal, right? Is to get these students a high school diploma and to increase our graduation rates and make sure that they have the skills that they need. Um, and we are doing that, right? So our company has been growing and expanding every year, adding more schools, adding more students. This year has been incredible for um, attendance and enrollment. At almost every school that Ali and I have gone to, like day one students were there and like Parma had like kids on laptops in the cafeteria you know so um maybe coming out of covid a couple years kids are are ready to come back to school so hopefully that just continues right next um these are well i can't see all of them ali i don't know if we increase the font but we have 16 schools in ohio um so we have three in akron four or five in Cleveland, uh, yep, four or five in Cleveland, two in Columbus, and then three down near the Dayton, Cincinnati area. Our newest school is um, Marshall Hamilton. So we're so excited to have you guys. And you guys just got into your building, didn't you? You just got like into yep. your building? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's exciting. Yeah, this is the first week of that. Wonderful. So congratulations on that. I know that that was exciting because when I came down to visit them, they were in like an office, like down the road, and so I know that it's nice to be. Baby looks so happy right now. Look at her. She's yes. smiling so big. She's the science teacher at Hamilton. Good. Well, I would love to come down and see her. You <laughs> think it's hard to get down from Akron, Cleveland to it, down it there, but I want to get back there this year sometime. You should definitely come see our building. We yes. have to. <laughs> so we have schools in Ohio and we are growing every year. Um, and that's just kind of like a map of, of where they're located right now. Next. This is our Oakmont vision. So um, John Stack, who in years past has been the CEO and president, but now is the CEO. We hired a new president this year. Um, he will sometimes really want people to know this mission, right? So our Oakmont vision, sorry, is to change lives and positively impact our communities by transforming under-resourced opportunity youth into responsible, educated, and skilled contributors to society. So it's a very like wordy one, this on our website. What I like about that is the word opportunity, right? So instead of at risk youth, which many of our students are at risk for a variety of things going on, um, we can see this as an opportunity, right? We have the opportunity to reach out to these kids in ways that other people have not, right? So they're with us and while they're in our buildings, you know, we have that opportunity. We want to make the most of it with every minute that we have with them. So I do like the word opportunity in there. Um, and then those pictures there. So this is probably from a marketing campaign that's a few years old. Some of those are students um, from Towpath, Maine from years ago. And it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if the top left one, that might not be the student I'm thinking of. Um, Allie, do you remember Cody Blanton? Oh, yeah. Cody Blanton was the student with like Asperger's. He loved Transformers. We all got Transformers drawings. And he graduated from Topath, Maine three or four years ago. And then maybe it was four or five years ago. And then Megan Carana, the assistant director there, just posted on her Facebook last week he graduated from college. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know, so those pictures are our students that I actually remember um, seeing, you know, um, the one in the middle there and the bottom some of our ESL students at Topaz Maine when we had a large percentage of Nepali students. Um, I think the, the student in the middle, she was a refugee from Afghanistan. So 
So we do have some very, very unique students that come from places in the world that, you know, I just have never been to or could not even imagine what it's like. So that's interesting. But then I think about neighbors our kids are open and their lives too. We have refugees from Afghanistan. These stories and they have these lies and we just have to be listeners and, um, you know, just empower them, even if their life experience is very different, you know. Next. These are our core values. So there are kind of two ways we think about this. Um, at the beginning or at the end of every year, you can win awards. So your director and then people in the building can nominate you to receive an award um, under one of these core values. I think Amy Kenyon has won um, a few. Amy, what are your awards? Is it innovative for the technology stuff? She's won a couple. Yeah, I got innovative twice. Oh, yeah. So Amy Kenyon got innovative and then there's authentic, committed, driven. So these are things that um, are really the core values of Oakmont. And I think that we do have the opportunity to be innovative, right? So we are in a position where with the opportunity to do things that public school can't do. You know, we can really work with students and guide instruction for them in ways that are unique, right? So we don't have to be stuck, you know, 100% on Apex or 100% to you know, this red tape structure that's been in existence forever because we are creating it, right? So we want to be authentic and committed and driven. And with authenticity, I, th I do think it's really important. The students can tell when we're not authentic. And I think that, um, you know, if you come with your authentic self, authentic and professional, they will see that and they will respect you for it. You know, they can detect yes pretty easily. So I, I think authentic is pretty important. And I think that because we're all here, we know that we're committed and we're driven, you know, for these kids and for the mission of improving their lives. Almost that's a given, you know. Um, oh, so we do get awards at the end of the year, and then um, we do a performance matrix evaluation. So I think a couple times a year, your director will ask you to allow like a chart that rates yourself on these things, like out of ten, where do you think you are, right? Um, so they might use that in a conversation maybe two times a year, just about growth opportunities. You know, we think you're really good at this. Maybe we could work a little bit more at this. So you might see it in, in both ways as part of, um, you know, a conversation with your director and then also as a reward, you know, if you get nominated for some of these values. Oh, and then we can also give out fond points too. So if we see, if me and Allie or anybody, um, see you guys doing something that really matches up with one of our core, core values, we can throw you some fun points, which you can redeem for gift cards and different things. All right, next. Allie, I'll probably let you do the teacher evaluation tool. Um, the teacher observation tool is something that we're doing this year. So in years past, we were part of OTES, the Ohio Teacher Evaluation System. And then last year, we were told that we don't actually have to do OTES in the same way that maybe a public school district does. So we worked with directors and we worked with um, people in Oakmont to create a teacher observation tool. Um, you should be getting observed by your director, assistant directors, um, Allie and I, a few times um, a year, at least once a month is the goal, right? So when Allie and I are in your classrooms, it's it's not like a gotcha, right? We're not trying to to like get anybody, but we're just kind of using that as a conversation piece to think about, okay, well, this is what I saw just as an outside observer. And, you know, we're never going to know the full story of what kids, you know, the stories of every kid. So we understand and absolutely, you know, realize that you've been working with this student on this thing and it may not exactly match up to the observation tool, but we're not be like, oh, gotcha, you know? So Ali, I'll let you talk more about that. Um, well, I, yeah, this is something um, the directors and, and Emily and I, you know, there were some execs involved as well. Like really put that together in a collaborative way. The, if you, um, I was trying to open it so I could show you uh, that we should be able to give you access to once so you could look at what's on there. So maybe we can add that just to send them um, a viewable version, um, just so they can see. Oh yeah, I don't know if we can, we'll try to do that. I know, we'll try. Um, but I want you guys you know, to know it's a growth tool. It was designed to provide uh, a way for us to have growth conversations with you to help 
hone in on skills. Um, and so if Emily and I are doing them, they are the directors may ask us to do them um, one of these seven to eight times. So occasionally some of our feedback, it could possibly be part of your evaluation. So just want you to know that um, you will always know if that's happening. Okay, if it's part of your evaluation, we will tell you. Most of the time when we come in and help you, we are really just making observations and might talk to you, ask you how things are going, and if you need help, give you some feedback. It's a very informal sort of coaching process, but there are times that we will be involved in doing the formal um, form as well. But it, yeah, it should just be seen as a tool designed to help you grow i want you to see it so you know what we're looking for just like providing a student an exemplar writing assignment we need to provide you what you know the expectations we're looking for in the class so make sure you know and you know get your eyes on it and ask us questions what does this mean so i had a great conversation with a new teacher who said this is the evaluation form but what like, what do I, act, what is good? Like, what are you, what, you know, what are you really looking for? So it opened up a good conversation. So ask us about that. Um, and it, it can only help you and help us know how to help you better. So anyway. Hey, Allie, I threw one in a chat to you in your email. Okay. One, they're all the same. So I don't know if you need to just show that one really quick. I, I chatted you the link. Um, let me see. I see it in there. Things are like kind of slow today. Actually, don't see it, Emily. Um, but I guess the only other thing I would say is if you have been evaluated with OTES, it was definitely designed um, looking at OTES, and most basic care, the basic um, things are OTES um, related. So, like, it's nothing that should shock you, like classroom environment, focus for learning, very similar topics that we've always looked for. We just kind of tweaked it to cater it to our um, school setup, our format, and how we have students working in multiple different courses at the same time. So we can't watch traditional teaching the way OTES was designed to evaluate. Yeah, I don't have any much more to add about that. And I, I'm just going to keep going on for the sake of time today. And we will make sure you have access to that. I can get it to pull up. All right. <laughs> Sorry. So the PLC or the collaboration team um, that you all are on, except for ESL. I'm very sorry for that. ESL, we don't have a team for you. Um, you can, you're more than welcome to join one of the teams, though, if you want to be involved. You know, and is it Janine? Is that how to say your name, Janine? Okay. I had an aunt named Janine, so I recognize that. Um, if you wanted to be on English, um, we'd be more than happy to invite you to be part of the English team. And we could probably send that out to all the ESL teachers. But yeah, your team, um, were you all on calls yesterday with your team? I guess. In the chat, can you write if you, yes, were on the call? Amy was on the call with her team. Josh, were you on the call? Did you make it to your subject? Janine wasn't on a team yet. Sorry. Katie, did you make it to your science team call? You did? OK. So uh, one of the big things um, is that you'll have monthly calls with your team to evaluate and discuss like how teaching is going in your related to your specific subject. The reason why we created these teams in the first place was if you really look at research and read about collaborative teams, it's the most um, productive way to help increase your students' achievement is if you have a someone to collaborate with um, and work together with and um, you know, toss ideas back and forth. You can't do it all by yourself. So, and you can't know how to do everything best with students by yourself. No one can. We all need each other and need collaboration. So, they, I mean, they've done studies on all the PD that teachers receive, and they said, hands down, the most effective PD that teachers can receive or be involved in is an actual effective 
learning community, not a conference or a one day workshop. That stuff is okay, but ongoing collaboration is the most effective thing to help drive um, student achievement and improve it. So we're trying really hard and you have to do it well for it to work well. Okay, so it's always a work in progress. We always have new people joining our teams and um, different levels of experience, but we really are trying to help through those teams do better with our students. So know that it's not a regulation body. It's not to tell you um, all of the roles. Now they're gonna help support the plan in place, but the purpose is to help increase um, student engagement and student achievement by meaningful adult collaboration. So through that. So, and really very, very importantly to also give you a support network, okay? You've got peers in your related subject that you can lean on. And um, I want you to get to know people in your team and make relationships with them, um, email back and forth questions, you know, and there should be a group team chat going. So if you have a random question in the middle of the day, you can pop that to your whole team and hopefully your team can help you. But um, they can be invaluable if you embrace it. And um, it's only ever as good as the members in it working together. So you're one part of your team. So you're in charge of your, your role. <laughs> All right. Um, those are just the basic initiatives that the teams do. We always have a shared resource. I'm always really helping um, put those together into a website, but you do have access to your department's drive file. And I really, I want you guys to tell us if you don't know where that is, and we will help walk you through that, to that spot, because it's important for you to have access to the resources specific to your subject. So if, does anyone need help? Or Emily, do you do you think we should walk to it or? I don't know why you're confused. So I can I can do a um, really quick little orientation with um, the teacher tool site. So okay, been, you want to do that right? Just do that right now because I'll stop presenting and you can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because I've been working on this teacher tool site where maybe a month ago it wasn't quite ready to show and i haven't really announced it to people because it's still really in like a draft version but i think it's built out enough that people will just understand it will continue to grow so i'll show that a little bit because i was going to add some of this dazzle stuff on there today for the new teacher page so i will share that out Emily, i'm just going to tell you and i love <laughs> you it will always be a work in progress because we're always going to have to add more to it that's true. But we have to tell her it's done and we love it and we're going to add to it as we go. All right. So, Allie, kind of same thing. Now I can't see you guys. Um, can you see where it says new teacher resources? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. It's the edited version, Emily. It's not the present version. So, I know. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, well, you can view public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, this will be what it looks like when you guys, this is the one that I was actually adding to right now. So, it will not look like this in about an hour. I'm gonna go from home. So the teacher tool site has everything I could think of. This really started as the LPDC site, which was the local professional development committee for five-year professionally licensed teachers. And then I was thinking last year, as I started adding things to it, that I'm putting professional development on there, I'm putting resources on there that everyone should have access to, not just the five-year professionally developed you know, professionally licensed teachers. So um, I've been starting to build out this website this year and I added a little search box, um, you know, you can search things. So the thing that Allie mentioned was the department resource folders. So right here, I have all the academic departments. So I don't have um, ESL as in the academic subjects because we haven't had like a academic department. I think there's a need for that. So, um, Janine, you're down at Marshall, correct? Sorry. Um, anyway, if I have that wrong, I'm sorry. So if you're at Marshall, that's where I think you are. But I know that at Frederick Douglass, they have a very high ESL population. Um, at Old Brook, Maine, they have some ESL students. At Franklinton, they have some ESL students. Not every school has 
the amount of ESL students that they have um, multiple staff or anybody really with that role. But I think that it could be beneficial to add an ESL department here. So we don't have it right now, but I think this could be something to add in the future. And I do have um, a page that doesn't have anything on it. See, this is where like, oh, it's really empty, right? But, you know, Janine, maybe I can work with you to help build that out. Um, I know that the English teacher at Topath, Maine, his name is Ben, he used to be the, one of our ESL teachers at Topath, Maine. So there are people with ESL expertise. We really should start to work to connect them. And I would love to work on that this year. But let's just take the English page right here. So for all of our academic subject areas, we have um, a resource folder. So what I've put on the website here is just a copy of the standards. Hey, I'm um, sorry to interrupt you. It still only says new teacher resources, the view we are looking at. Oh, man. Thank there you. There you go. Now Thanks, it went Sally. there. Thank it went you. there. Yeah. All right. So I got my home page here. And then over here on the side, we have academic subject areas. So every academic subject area should have um, some basic resources in there. On every single page, I have tried to put a copy of the standards and then a link to the drive folder. So in the past, we just had a shared drive folder where we put resources and you can email your department chair things, you know, like lessons that you've done. And we are trying to collect this year, like really great exemplar lessons. So if you teach a lesson um, that you think is just really awesome and you want to share it with your department chair or me or Allie, please don't hesitate to email us and we can throw it in this resource folder. But what would often happen is people didn't really share those because the drive is kind of its own monster, right? And we're like, oh yeah, it's on the drive. Um, and that works for some people. People like me, I'm like, oh, everything is on the drive. How do I find it, right? So this website has been kind of my attempt to put things in one spot so that I know where it is and how to get to it. So this is a link to I'm sorry. the drive folder where you have all of these lessons. And that should be true for any of the other department um, sites. We also have things that are department um, specific. So like in the English department, they have a literary magazine called Exclamation that we're trying to get students to submit to. So that link is on there. And then just some links for you know, relevant materials. Um, the math department, we have the, um, the standards. And then we have a lot of, and then the resources folder, and then a lot of Desmos resources. So Desmos is something that the students should be using in every math classroom. Um, Kevin Fitzpatrick, the one of the chairs of the math department, has created some great scavenger hunt activities. And then Desmos also launched a geometry tool this year, which they've never had in the past. So this will continue to, um, you know, get filled up and built out as we as we go through. So these are some of the department resources. We have some special education resources there. Again, this is one of the areas where we haven't built it out a lot because I need to work with um, Alicia and Cherry. We have MTSS stuff that should be coming. Um, we really want to have like resources available for teachers where if you're struggling, you know, with some of the stuff that's already in the department folder, maybe we have some intervention things. Okay. We have some social emotional things that people have been using. So, uh, for example, there are some teachers using these um, social emotional journals. So like this one, right? It's just a reflection. And I think you could use this in almost any classroom. We have teachers who, um, this is actually an intervention, I'm sorry, not intervention, a family advocate at one of our schools that has just a journaling activity in the morning where students you know, start with a journal and they've really been loving it. You know, they're like, oh, where's my journal? I would love to do the thing this week. And here at Randall Park, um, Mr. Zito, the English teacher, you know, is starting like a poetry submission, you know, thing. So we have so many things in here that teachers are doing that are awesome. And we want to be able to share them so people can use those in their classroom. I've also been trying to build out some of our trainings that we're doing. So like I threw the link in the chat to the tech tips Part of the site. So this is Amy Kenyon's technology tip um, part and it automatically updates with her most recent video from her YouTube channel. So the one she just posted this week was on IXL progress monitoring. So she has this video here and then if you click it 
you can watch it here on the site or you can go to her YouTube channel where she has, you know, lists of all of her videos. Um, we have videos on Apex. So we did an Apex training, right? And this is Amy Kenyon recording it. So you can go there and if you, you know, have a question about Apex, maybe it's answered in this video. I was working right now to add, like right as we were doing the, the training here. So I had Dazzle on its own page. So we had like the Dazzle onboarding video and then some of the resource sheets. And then as we were talking, I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna throw them right here on the new teacher page. So what I'm changing right now during this call is I will probably put this Dazzle information right here on the new teacher homepage. So some of those things I might edit and change and move around as we go. But if you can't find something, you can always email me and ask. So that's kind of just the, the website for the new teacher page. And I will go ahead and share the main link to the homepage there. Um, just with the understanding that if you click on a site and it's really empty and you're like, there's really nothing on here. That's just something that we haven't had the opportunity to build out yet. But we will, you know, as we continue to move on through the year. And again, with some of these things where they don't have a lot of resources on them already, if you have ideas or resources that you'd like to offer, please, we don't, you know, I'm not going to turn that down. So especially with ESL and MTSS and some of these things where it's not just English, math, science, social studies, you know. Am I missing anything, Allie, or is that good? No. Are they able to use the site? Yeah, you're yeah. sharing it. All right. That's what I'm yeah, So excited. it should be accessible. And then but I, I do need some help sometimes where I forget to update the sharing settings. So there have been times where I share the site and then it has like a document on it and I haven't updated the sharing to like be viewable to everybody. So if you click on something and it's like, you don't have access to this, email me and you probably should have access to it. I just forgot to share it accessibly to everybody. Awesome. All right, yeah, I, and I would recommend, you know, bookmarking the website. We are working with operations to get basically a button, an app on your dashboard that just takes you right to this website just to make it very easy. It would just be something you can pick up right off of your um, desktop, you know, as like an app, like any other file. Um, just, that was just a recommendation. So we're trying we're trying to work on making easy access for teacher and you know student. Something we look at a lot. But the website looks awesome, Emily. And yeah, I've just been so anxious when to let teachers go in there. Um, so I'm excited. You guys have it. Well, you guys got early access. Yeah. Like, it's anybody else up, like here and there yeah. outside? So you got the preview version. Version. Maybe okay, I'll send yeah. an email later this week. <laughs> Thursday. Huh. Um, I'm just so probably like so annoyed by me because I keep asking about it. So I'm like, <laughs> so, so like, I just wanted it to be good, you know, like, but I have to remember. remember right. that so you, you may get an email um, later this week or next week, like, hey, here's this website. And you're like, I already know about it. All right. Um, do you guys need a five minute? Run to the restroom. I'm going on. Will you guys stop? Mm -hmm. But intervention, Josh, you're gonna probably work with Cherry. She does calls and things with you guys. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We they just kind of collaborate Tuesday. on content, and it's just a, a sounding board for them to run ideas past each other. And then you know they they do these three things. They have that shared network of resources, and then they do they host like a all school wide initiative. Um, and those are some examples on that slide. So we had like all the history teachers do an election project. So they all did that. So every site did the same project and they collaborated on it and put all the data together, the polls. You know, we can add our own in-house electoral college. We used our schools as different voting districts. So, I mean, we can go, we, we do some fun stuff. But they, their one task is, you know, one big fun project a year. Yeah. So English does a literary magazine that Emily mentioned. So they get all the kids to um, enter um, literary work or artwork and they put a magazine together twice a year. You know, and it's combined of all the schools. It's really cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I just, um, 
Oh, I'm sorry, fine. we don't have one for you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I was actually just talking with our science teacher um, yesterday and this morning and talking to Dr. Kelly um, about putting a project together, like doing a real archaeological dig, like getting mm. clay and sand and putting some, like owl pellets and rocks and stuff in there and um, teaching the kids to do like a, a real dig. So um, we might be trying to focus on doing that at some point in time. That would be wonderful. That'd be really yeah. fun. Yeah, collaborating, uh, you know, I like that. I already hear you have that collaborative spirit. So yeah, yeah. We're, you could work with any of your subjects on, with all these projects, you know, you can be yep. right in there. Is everyone back? I, I mean, I, I don't see faces. Uh, yep. But um, let's see, I know Josh is on, I know Katie's aware. Janine, are you with us? Amy, are you back? Amy um, is Cynthia with us? There's Amy, all right. Um, all right, Allison and Cynthia, are you guys back? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. So, yeah, just to wrap up, Emily was describing point number one. Um, we do have shared resources amongst the teams. It's the four, collab four content areas that have these files. If you just go to the shared with me drive and type in social studies, like type in your subject. And even if you're an IS, you can, you have access to all these things. So an ESL, you have access to every single subject. Um, but you you can just, if you go to shared with me and type in your subject title, you will oh, get to the shared, um, the shared resource folder that the teams already house. So it's in the, it's in the drive file. Even if you don't have the website, Miss Emily just shared. If you just type in your subject name and shared with me, you will find your subjects um, drive file. So, all right. The other two things that the teams do, and if you were, if you heard me talking with Josh during break, is explaining this a little. So there's school-wide initiatives that each um, subject kind of helps work together on. And um, we have some examples there. So all the social studies teams, teachers did an election project. So we turned our whole entire, you saw our state map where our schools are. We turned our schools each into their own voting district and um, had the students vote and did all, all the stuff. We had um, English department actually helping and had uh, reporters on the scene at the polls. And I mean, they went the whole nine yards. It was really cool. But that's just an example of what within those departments um, happens. The literary magazine was born out of the English department, which is an awesome project. We're going to, it's an institution now. So, you know, we've got this, this space here. These, like Emily said, we have a lot of space for innovation collaboration within those teams man you know we can literally develop a program that will be something that becomes what we do for years and years and years um because it's so great and it works we wouldn't know unless we tried it so these teams are awesome we have um like i said that literary magazine the um students can all contribute they publish it twice a year in january and at the end of the year before graduation so graduates can take a copy home a lot of them take a lot of pride in having their work in that magazine it's a great senior takeaway um but then you know like science did a earth day um event where they planned activities um for the whole entire week um, that encompassed Earth Week or Earth Day. I call it Earth Week. So I love Earth Day. <laughs> it's my favorite holiday. Um, and then, so yeah, just an example of fun things. The third thing on there is the data project, which you might have if you were on your call discussed that with your department chair. The first thing. But you will um, be collaborating and looking at data together, so we can help each other understand what the data means and understand, um, basically see if we can learn something from the data that will help us um, in the classroom. So collaboration on data is always a big part of the teams um, and what they work on. So, 
just some stuff to expect. Um, okay, so the intranet is, um, this is the Oakmont Operations website, and it is much like the, well, it's, it's different, but it's a website that houses all the important like HR things, school things. So hopefully you have access to the intranet. Um, you can pop, you can open it right from the, the shared link that we gave you with the slides today. Um, but yeah, just another place to go for all of the things you might need. Your director will probably tell you if you need to go to something on there. But that's the operations, HR and expense reports and all of that information, the job kind of related stuff. All right. Um, we do have, so within those collaboration departments, and I am not sure for ESL or special ed right now. I know that all of your content teams will have a in-person meeting in Columbus on February 16th. So it's a planned all in-service day for all the schools. So just, you know, put that on your calendar so you save the date. It's just really a warning so you all know. It's the day before President's Day weekend, so sometimes people like to take that day off, but it will be a in-service day. And everyone will meet. You'll get to meet all the people in your team in person. So it's really fun. Um, and then in June, we are potentially also scheduling another uh, meeting location to be determined. And that would take place after graduation, and it would be definitely more of a fun collaboration. That's my goal. <laughs> I'm going to have a June send off. So just what to expect right there. You've got your monthly calls, a meeting in person, um, some projects to work on with your team, and then uh, potentially a fun meeting in June. All right. Um, the LPDC is just, is just for you to know if you are a professional teacher. Emily and I lead this team. Um, we have four meetings a year. So if you're a teacher who has a professional license, uh, make sure you um, talk to your rep at your school and you're aware of the deadlines and meeting dates. The schedule's right here. And then um, for RE or resident educators, there is an orientation coming up in October. And um, if you, you can just wait for that orientation and I will provide all the guidance um, for what tasks you might need to do with your mentor to get through the mentoring program. Um, but it has really changed into a two-year program, if you weren't aware. Um, if you're a regular resident educator, you only it's only a two-year um, program, and then you can um, go ahead and get a five-year professional license. The only exception is if you're an alternative resident educator. So I've alternative resident educators have to go in for all four years they only get mentored for two but they still have to keep that license for four years and meet all those requirements so if you guys have questions about lpdc reach out to emily or i if you have questions about resident educator reach out to ally so that's really all you need to know and then there's weird stuff going on with that slide so i don't know what happened but the help desk is definitely a number and an email you want to keep because people always have trouble finding how to reach, reach out to ODE. That um, educator.licensure at education.ohio.gov is the first best one-stop shop email to send any licensure questions. Just always include your license number, your Ohio ID when you're requesting information it's the first thing they'll ask you so it'll speed up your answer if you give that to them first all right that's all i'm going to say about that um emily you want to speak on the calendar or what i forget why we put that there yeah oh it's just so a i mean amy kenyon had um kind of a basic video on how to use google calendar okay there's a lot of things that we're using more and more every year, probably since COVID, right? COVID was really like everyone got into Google, right? So we're using Google Meet like this, right? Um, the calendar is something that I think you need to be able to use and even I struggle with it, right? So um, 
like <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example. So with the calendar, we have two, you have kind of like different calendars on there. We have an Oakmont academic yeah. events calendar. Right there. And that is where we post a lot of like I wrote down the February 16th date because I couldn't remember if we'd already posted that on there or not. So you can check that for any PD that's coming up, um, like the all staff trainings. I also try to go through there and look at um, all of the state support teams. So I don't know if all of you know this or not, if you're new to teaching, if you already know this, then excuse me. But every area in the state has a state support team that runs trainings and sessions on all kinds of different things like PBIS and literacy and so many important, valuable things, right? So I usually try to check those and put on the academic events calendar ones for every area. So like in Akron, it's state support team eight. Um, I think Cleveland is state support team three, right? So you can always check that. And then um, there's also like educational service committees that they'll sometimes um, team up with. So maybe Amy Kenyon's video shows you how to be added to the Oakmont, how to add the Oakmont calendar to your calendar. This is where it's like, even I need to brush up on how to do those things, right? So Amy Kenyon, are you on? Are you available to talk right now or are you with students? Okay, Janine, I will make sure that you get sent like the video or the instructions for how to add it. Yeah, try that. If it says just click on the link and request it, try it. it that might just be a link to her video, you know, but it will show some of those events that we post. Um, the other thing just with using the calendar um, that we discovered just with our, our previous like Monday where we had like the dismissal or maybe it was Friday, dismissal at two or dismissal at three, Monday. Yeah. was it Monday? Where we had two to four on the calendar and then I had in the notes, like two to three is a TBT meeting and three to four is the um, department calls, right? And everyone's like two to four for a department call. I'm like, no, read the notes, right? So read the descriptions in the events will sometimes contain um, valuable information or instructions or like especially if we're going to this event on the 16th of February, it may contain instructions for like if you need to book a hotel room or, you know, how to submit your expense report, some of those things. So just little like technicalities with Google Calendar. Um, but I understand if you don't know 100% because even I'm like, oh, yeah, that weird quirk escaped me, you know, we totally understand. And then I with think Google events, you know, like um, Ali mentioned, there's a chat, right? So every department has a team chat. So in your email on the left, right, you have like individual chats and then you have the team chats. So some of those can be very helpful. We don't want teachers to live on the computer and be tied to the little bloop, you know, like that's not ideal, but there is sometimes valuable information in the Google calendar, in the chats that come through. So just be aware of it and just know how to use it. Um, and if you don't, then ask somebody, ask me, ask Amy Kenyon. And, you know, if you've watched her YouTube video and you're like, I still need extra help, don't be afraid to ask. We definitely are here as a resource and we don't want to be like, well, you should know this. If you don't know something, please ask and we will figure it out together. Yeah, um, all I'd have to add to that is when we do have trainings that we send you to Columbus or if I have um, set up a shadow visit or Emily set up a shadow visit for you to go somewhere, I always include the location, the time into that count invite. So I want to make sure, you know, look at that. I It's included in the invite, so you know where to go. I'll put a brief agenda on the times. So just look at, like Emily said, um, the details are important and a lot of answers um, to your basic questions are probably right in that invite itself. If you if you kind of look through all the, the parts of the invite. Um, but yeah, it's just important. We definitely have to use Google Calendar a lot and um, I know that, you know, all the departments and the directors and everyone just to make sure everyone um, knows um, like how many people are coming to an event that we all respond, you know, please just respond just you know, or maybe um, as quickly as you know, if you're coming um, just to help out all the planning and that, so make it go smoothly for you. Um, all right. The next thing, level up. 
Uh, all right, so our newsletter and Emily, Amy, and I, which I can't claim that I do a whole lot with it um, this year um, so far, but we all kind of collaborate and um, Emma, or Amy um, emails that out with someone. It's the first school day of the month. So it's an email and it's a really great resource. Um, we often have um, upcoming PD and meetings that are included in that, um, teacher tips and maybe some spotlights, but there's always kind of a lot of good, important information. So look for the Level Up newsletter. It's an email and it comes to you the first day, school day of each month. All right. There's also contests in there sometimes. <laughs> um, okay. So this is, we're getting into like the day in the life of a um, teach or a student and a teacher really at our schools. I know that most of you are in the building. Um, I have one remote teacher with us, so she's not with her students. Um, but most of you are probably and have been around um, at least working in your, your spot for hopefully maybe a week or so. Um, but grad, so I'm, I'm saying that because you're probably kind of getting familiar with the classes of how the school operates. We have triage here. Um, and that's because, you know, you all know um, probably with working in your schools or you even started that our students come in with all different needs as far as what courses they need. And we use a grad tracker. It's a um, planning sheet. And it helps us basically diagnose, if I'm going to keep the medical um, analogy going, where a student is at, what they might need to um, take next. And we fill this little planner out and shows what courses they've taken, what courses they need. And um, they meet with their AD. One of the first things they do um, is meet with their AD to go over this. So we basically fill in where they're at based on their incoming transcript. And then as they continue to finish courses, we fill those in and then assign them the next course. So it's a living and breathing document um, that is it's actually state mandated. Um, we did it long before they started requiring graduation planners, but now it is state requirement for any school like ours for a drop out recovery school, so a special distinction with the state. Um, they're all required to create grad planners. So it's a really, really good and important practice, um, practice and it's one of the bones of what we do. It's the driver of almost everything because that helps that student know where they're at, set goals, and it creates their pathway to graduation, um, which is the key purpose of having a high school is helping students graduate. Um, and a grad plan will show all the different pathways and opportunities that they have and helps us guide them um, through this option as they go to courses. Um, the AD and the director are primarily the ones filling those out, but you should be shared with them. You should have access to them and um, at least be able to see if the kid asks you a question and wants to ask you about what they need. At least you can show it to them and be somewhat knowledgeable. I wouldn't answer specific graduation questions because the um, assistant director and the director um, really own that information. And that's because it depends on a lot of things with that student. Um, for example, if a student was a freshman in 2017, um, their requirements to graduate are, are very different from a student that has a graduation or freshman class of 2023 um, or even 22. So um, the, the rules that a student's held accountable or has to graduate with are based on the year that they were a freshman. So if a student was a freshman and there were different rules in place, they can graduate under the old rule and guideline. They can also graduate under the most new released guideline, which is what we have now, our permanent requirements. But if you aren't sure about what options that student has, it can get a little confusing um, because of the way that ODE has changed graduation requirements. They did it probably four or five years in a row um, 
where they adjusted and changed different requirements and testing requirements. And um, I would just leave that up to the experts so we don't mislead a student and telling them, you know, something that isn't true. Um, but that's the grad planners. Um, it's a great tool. It's something, like, like I said, a driver of a lot of our processes at the schools. Um, the state test portal is right here. So these are all live links that you can go. Um, I can just take you there. Oh, shoot. I hit stop sharing instead of share this instead. Darn me. Um, um, a couple of things I did want to show you. Um, our students are required to take the, they call them OSTs at a lot of places. Um, we are used to calling them EOCs, end of course exam, Ohio State test. Those two things mean the exact same thing. Um, but I would, I think that it's really advantageous for you as a teacher um, to go in on this website and, you know, go to the bicycle. I love the bicycle for practice. Um, that graphic's been the same for about 15 years, and that's why I like it. A lot of things change on the internet, but that bicycle's been there for me to trust. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, click on that and take the test in your subject that you know your students are going to have to experience. I'm an experiential based learner, so I like to throw myself into the experience that my students are going to have to deal with so that I can kind of relate and empathize with what they're going through. Um, so it's the best way for you to prepare them for the test is for you to go ahead and try that test yourself first, see how you feel about it. Um, it should be that you're covering content in your courses that would help prepare those students their end of course exams. Um, so that should be embedded. Um, however, we know our students' time that they get to take the test isn't often natural nor the way it was designed. Um, the tests are designed for students who sit in the course and then take the um, test at the end of the course. Our students might finish English too in um, October and then they don't take the test till December. So there's always a, a, a gap um, between when our students finish a course and then have to take the test because of the way that our students rotate through courses. Uh, so there is definitely some test prep and things that we will um, have teachers do to help any kid that needs to take this test, usually like 10 to 8 weeks before the test um, is issued. They try to do some prep at the schools. That totally looks very different at every school. So I'm not going to give you examples or all of that. Just know that something you're probably involved with is some test prep um, for your you know, subject. And make sure you're asking your AD diligently, hey, who's on my testing list? You know, they can share that with you so you can prepare your kids. The tests are offered in December and in um, the end of March and April. So there's two testing windows for the end of course exam. So two opportunities. Um, the STAR assessments are one of the first baseline things our students do. So they meet with their AD, go through their grad tracker, um, and then they take these two assessments to establish a baseline for um, you know, the academic team to evaluate and see where our students are at. Um, those are adaptive tests, meaning they adjust the questions as the students go and they will get harder if the students answer more correctly. They will get easier if the students miss questions, and it's designed to gauge their grade level in reading and in math. Um, it's a state requirement. It's attached to our report card. And the most two most important things for you guys to know, you definitely want to know and just support the importance of students taking these. Um, be growth mindset about it, you know, be very positive. Um, I have explained because it's hard sometimes to get buy-in or motivation for students to do something that isn't, there's not really any benefit to them. They're taking this test so that we can see if our school is growing in areas so that we can get a rating on a report card as a school. But it, it, there is a collective benefit for students to do well on a, a star test, not only to, for their own, well, their own individual growth to evaluate that, um, 
but also to help the school. So, you know, sometimes like it really benefits the school that you take your, do your best, or, you know, try your hardest. Um, it's important that the students show growth um, from the fall to the spring and that we have at least 75% of our entire student body participating in both of those terms. So 75% of our population has to take the test in the fall and that's based on the enrollment at that time and then 75 percent of the students enrolled in the spring have to take that test if we do that then we get measured so if we don't even meet the participation requirement we don't even have a chance for that to help our report card so participation is the best, most important and then we definitely want the students showing growth from fall to spring um, and you will see lots of in fun and innovative incentive programs for students when they have to take that second star test to encourage them to go up and um, really have a growth mindset about it. So that's star. Um, all right, star growth. So I talked about this slide. I'm not gonna say all those things again. Um, there is often a teacher that helps um, and organize the STAR initiative, so, so be aware of that. And then, um, all right, so to the curriculum, we, uh, our credit, basic credit expectations are that students earn five credits per school year. And that, you know, of course, they'd have to have good attendance to do that. But that's comparable to um, what a student would do at a traditional high school, even more, maybe more than five credits often. Um, but to do that, and we've calculated this based on our school calendar, our students need to earn a half of a credit every three to four weeks to keep this pace and one credit every six to eight weeks, which is just times two, right? Um, just a good um, gauge for you to, I just, you know, keep that in your mind. Um, it should take the kids about three weeks, four weeks to get through a half credit course. It's just a gauging tool for you to set your mind, um, kind of set that parameter in, in your mind and try to approach your course with, you know, a three to four week closure. Um, right. And yeah, down here it says, that's that's definitely something that the department teams will discuss, is that data and um, how long, you know, it's taking kids to get through the courses. And we are gonna monitor some global APEX data to look at that and see how things are going. So that, um, this is a very good pacing guide. So we always share this. It just helps to discuss with students where they're at so if they come in and they say, I need 20 credits, I have zero credits, and I'm a senior. <laughs> We've had this happen. You know, I've had kids come in with, with one credit, and they are 21 years old. Um, we have this mapped out. So it'll tell you how long, based on your production level. So at the top, that's how many assignments that kid is doing every day. I'll tell you how long it would take you to graduate. Now, these are all estimates. Um, they were based on the number of assignments that were in APEX. Um, but they're still a, general, a good general guide, really. Um, but yeah, you can graduate in six years if you do two assignments a day and you need all your credits. And that's based on our school calendar. But it's, a, it's definitely a good conversation piece. So hopefully you can find that useful. I had it for like a year and a half. I'm sorry if I'm so jumpy. My mouse just, okay. So Dazzle, um, this is my, that's my basic Dazzle um, kind of cheat sheet. But this, um, I like the breadcrumb trails. They helped me when I was learning Dazzle. Whenever you're looking at, and I can try to pull up my Dazzle. Whenever you're looking at Dazzle, if you memorize the, and look at those breadcrumb trails, it'll help you just ensure you're in the right spot. The resources that Emily shared with Dazzle has the breadcrumb trails in it that you would need to get to where you want to go. But I am gonna, I can, I'm gonna show you something very quickly. So you have to press play. 
Okay. Some of that. I won't. So when that's over, you'll be able to let me in. So, yeah, these are just a couple of breadcrumb trails to get you to Dazzle. Does everyone or does anyone need a Dazzle account still? Like, if you need one, yeah. um, you need to let your director know because they have to reach out to the appropriate person. So, please let your director know if you don't have Dazzle yet. You get an email, an actual email from Neonet. It'll say student support. So it will look kind of weird, but that email is how you, you respond and set up your account. So let your director know if you if you haven't gotten in there. And I wish I could log in and show you something really quick. These are, you know, the cookie crumb trails to see student marks, um, best grades. These are um, to see student, or sorry, when you're adding teacher comments for um, progress reports. This would make sense if you're watching her video. All right. And um, Ellie, you added those resource sheets that um, the lady from Neonet provided to us during that training on the new teacher site that I put in the chat earlier. So I awesome. think it has those breadcrumb trails on it. But if you can't find something, please email me or Allie and we can work mm -hmm. with you. Say, like, click here, do this, do this, you know, because it, it can be kind of archaic. That's all. Um, Kind of a dinosaur it doesn't always play nice so we understand if you can't find something i know i want to show you one oh yes okay one super simple thing to get you started okay if you can you guys see my dazzle screen mm -hmm. progress report okay progress book so if i'm um yeah i have to pick a school if you guys in the search bar if you just hit um, asterisk and hit enter, and it, it'll probably take an hour to do this for me. Of course. <laughs> if you do that, there you go. Okay. I, I get impatient and anxious. <laughs> um, if you do that, you'll see all the students. And then if you want to pick one of their names, you can click on it. Um, I just wanted to show you how to navigate to a student's information. The asterisk is my best friend because I, if not, Dazzle is very specific about spelling. So I would have had to memorize the student's last name to get to her and type it in here perfectly. So I prefer to use the asterisk in my shortcuts. You could type in like AL, an asterisk, and it'll pull them up. But that's just Allie's little tip. You can navigate side to side through different students' information with these arrows. And you can um, click on this. There's a really quick shortcut list of things that you have access to see. So, for example, the one of the most important first things is contacts. So if you have a student pulled up and you need to call their home, you go view student contacts and it will show you their contacts information down here right but this i want to drop down is super helpful um okay so that, that's you know other than that um that gets you started in the video and other resources and if not ask us questions like emma keeps um reminding you you can always email us all right So our curriculum guidelines and tools, and I am not sure some formatting stuff happened. It might happen when I imported the slides, but our grade distribution, um, and this is a new change. So all the teachers might be talking about how this is different from last year, um, but grades are distributed based on like a 75-25, and that's an estimate. It's not exact, okay? But about 75% of a student's grade should be based on all of those lessons in APEX or um, replacement lessons that are covering that same standard in APEX. So content related, 25% of their grade can be earned through purpose points. So those would include, and we'll show you examples of that um, on a different slide, but more of the social emotional lessons, um, skills based foundational lessons that supplement or support the content in that area. Um, so they might be 
prescribed some IXL lessons to improve in, you know, maybe one or two of the English standards. And so they can do some IXL to supplement and get purpose points for their English course. And so that can be up to 25% of the student's grade. And the course content related um, sub or standard related um, assignments are gonna make up that 75% of their grade. All right. Um, so that any questions about that? Um, and, you know, I know that teams at their buildings are working through, like, what are the coolest ways for them to do purpose points? Um, but purpose points really should, you should think of it as a way to be empowered as a teacher, a way for you to actually, like Emily was saying, we can do what we know and what we hear the student, what they really need. Um, and we are not held or bound to the outside rules. So we, that 25%, we really want you to be able to hone in and help a kid learn how to read, help a kid learn how to do some basic math that they missed that will help them in algebra and give them points for that. So um, also to reward them, their positive behavior in class, um, signing their name, completing their goal sheet, all of those things that might um, help them build their work ethic or their sense of self, their sense of responsibility. So um, that's that. There's different versions. Um, I'm going to bring up one point about you know, or prescriptive course versus regular. If you see a course or a student that's in prescriptive, they actually have an extra um, pretest in front of each unit. And that is a way for a student to test out of material that they've already potentially received instruction. And so it says CR over there. That is for credit recovery students. So that means, like my example earlier, I've had a 21-year-old enroll with one credit. That student is in credit recovery, you know, big time. They are years behind. Um, and so they can sit and take diagnostic tests and try to test out of content. And that can help them speed up earning those um, credits. Uh, that's a, a specific program and way for students to earn credits. It's a state, um, there's state rules about credit recovery. So that's the option we have for our kids that are behind. Just know that your AD and your director are the ones that decide and look at the transcript and will determine if the student's eligible or not for prescriptive. So you don't have to decide. Just know that they have a pretest, they're, they're able to test out a material, and it's based on how far behind they are in um, high school, essentially. Um, the things that are gonna be the same across all the schools, so every single school has the same um, APEC settings. All of the schools are gonna have the same grading system and the same way to document alternatives. So those are the things that are the same across all schools. What you do within those, um, like you have that purpose point area, you can replace lessons in Apex. That's where you be unique and um, creative yourself. These are just the kind of guardrails, is what Karen calls it. She's our um, vice president. She calls them guardrails, just some that maybe boundaries to stay with, with it, to operate. Was there a question that came up? Yeah, um, I raised my hand. Okay. I'll put it down now. Um, so yes, I think I was looking at when you said um, it's not really the teacher's job to decide whether they're prescriptive or not. That's director. I will say is that I have had students who may have to take the class school and the way the class up is that there's a pretest at the beginning of every unit. And if you remember the information and you know the information and you can pass that pretest, it can test you out of, you know, multiple assignments in that unit. But I have experienced um, students who did take the class before at their other school and don't really remember much, and they're not being very successful on that pretest. So I have recommended to my assistant director, like if the student is just butting their head against a wall with that pretest, even if they can qualify for prescriptive, is that the best choice, right? So I would say that you can, you can, ask that to your assistant director or to whomever makes that decision. 
um, because if a student's just getting frustrated and frustrated from the pretest because they're like, I don't know any of this, and they would rather just get in and do the work anyway, you can always talk to your assistant director and just you know have that conversation about what's best for the student. They don't have to be in prescriptive if you know they've taken the class before at their home school. Um, does anyone have any questions about that, or does that make sense? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I've definitely had students and told them, hey, take this kid out of the biology prescriptive. It's, it's wasting their time. So we're always looking out, or teachers, you gotta always look out for your students and see how they're reacting and responding to stuff. But it is a good point. Um, all right. Woo, we only have 20 minutes, Miss M. Um, this is pretty wild. Yep, okay. <laughs> Curriculum guidelines. Um, so that's our, again, our alignment expectation. Um, this is important. So you can differentiate eight from apex, um, but you can't change the point value. So if you're replacing, you can replace things. Um, you just have to keep the point value the same and then we'll show you how to document or yeah document it but just know like you know we're not saying you have to teach 75 percent apex okay that's um sort of one of those uh misconceptions when they read this but it should be based off of the standard that's covered in that apex lesson and um always obviously covered covers an ohio standard um so your replacement has to include that standard and um, the same aligned point value that the assignment it is replacing. Um, yeah, and of course, um, best practice. So for students that are taking the end of course exam, I mentioned that you'd probably be involved in some prep. These are just some examples of ways to improve test scores at the schools. So I'm not going to go into that in depth just for time. The purpose points. Um, curriculum alignment expectations. So this is what I was talking to uh, you about that grade distribution um, and it has created some confusion. I already spoke on a lot of these examples, but if you guys are having struggles with purpose points, that's a great thing to talk about with your department, see what other teachers are doing. And of course your director and your AD, if you need ideas, um, and the website has tons of stuff for that, but that is purpose points. Um, so students' grades are based on a traditional scale. If they get a 90 or higher, they're gonna get an A. Um, so they will have to attempt all of the assignments in their APEX course. Um, they don't have to pass every single assignment, but when they're done with their course, they have to at least have 60% to pass at a D, okay? which is pretty much how all schools in Ohio operate. We don't ever, we haven't really ever failed a student because if they're under 60%, then we're gonna require them to do some assignments and get that up. So we, we've never issued an F that's against our policy. It's not what we do. We're here to help recover credits. We, there's no need for us to give Fs. So we'll make that kid, we'll keep them in that class until they do enough to finish it. Um, mm, all right. And if you are looking at your classes, this is probably more, it makes more sense to maybe a returning teacher, but in the past we did remove for this school year, we removed some assignments from APEX um, and just did some, like it says, for redundancy um, in order to add also um, points and space for purpose points. So we kind of adjusted our, the lessons in APEX, but yeah, the departments met and did that and they, they used the Ohio standards to decide what was important to keep in and what they could remove. Um, student grades, uh, course assignment grades. So students are not required, like I said earlier, to earn a 60 on every single thing. Um, and in APEX, there is a way to allow a student to progress. Say they got a 40% on a math quiz and they took it six times and they're like, this is the best I can do. I can't even sit and suffer through this math test again. Please let me keep my 40%. 
Okay, you can keep your 40% this one time, I might say, and just help and encourage that kid. I don't, we don't want kids getting stuck in one little thing to hold them up. So I wouldn't do that a lot, like I said, but you can allow a student to progress past a non 60% score. Um, I always say just make sure that you still have enough, you know, you're going to have to do better on some other grades to to get that grade back up. But we don't want kids beating their heads against the wall with one math quiz. You know, it's not that important. Um, okay, that's just a little, that's how credit recovery works. Um, if you're one and a half years behind in school based on your credits and where you should be based on your freshman year, then you are eligible for credit recovery um, courses, which would be the test out method using prescriptive courses at our school. Right. Um, grade documentation. So all the grades will be graded into the Apex gradebook. Um, I know a lot of teachers use Google and use other tools um, to issue assignments to students. But if they do something on a puzzle or your Google Classroom, you're just going to put points into Apex um, wherever that assignment is replacing. So um, did you have a question, Curtis? Oh, no, sorry. All right. So the point values um, for each course are the same across all the schools, OK? So there's been things that were removed. They were removed at every single school. There were purpose points added. Those were added for every single school's grade book. So the grade books should be the same. Um, okay, so to document, I might, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you about the iComment, but I'll have Emily show the iComment box. Um, when we bring up Apex, there's an I next to each student's name, and that's a little box for us to note when we replace an assignment. I'll show you that in a minute. So you can embed links to your replaced assignments into the purpose point sections in your Apex courses, which you should see those if you're in Apex. You should see these custom assignments in each in the front of each unit. Um, you can add links to your Google Classroom to add puzzle lessons, um, but you cannot change the point value. So just do not edit how much how many points. Um, those custom assignments are worth. Those are the two things you can't do with that editor is remove something nor change a point value. You can add links, you can teach a different book, a different um, lesson, but the point value has to be the same. Okay. That's a little slide to show you what it looks like from a student, the custom assignments. It looks like that in the front of each unit. So it says purpose points down here. This custom thing, Apex cannot change that. We are not able to put an actual label. So I'm sorry, but you can change where it says purpose points right here. You can put a, a different title there if you want and a link to like your assignment. Um, alternative assignments. Um, yeah. This is how, this is a little snapshot in the corner of the I comment box and a sample note. So if I'm replacing a lesson, um, and I think I have a link to my lesson bank. Um, if I'm replacing a lesson and this is like three, one, two, that's the lesson number. Um, I put LB because what I, I'm gonna show you is a lesson bank that you have access to that you're going to add um, links to your alternative lessons into a spreadsheet. So this note is just a note to say, my student did lesson bank number two, my lesson of my lesson bank. Um, and those are my initials. So the lesson I replaced, what lesson it was, and then my initials. So that's what an I comment should look like. If you're replacing an assignment in Apex that's graded, um, with a, a different resource. 
Um, and these are different things that you can do to replace and, and really why we would replace lessons. Um, we have used Apex for years and we had very bad attendance. When I first started teaching, it was all Apex and we weren't allowed to do anything besides Apex. And we had to teach every single lesson that was in it. So every CST, every TST, and our students, we, we knew it was not the best learning resource for them. Um, they had terrible attendance. And so it really wasn't engaging enough for our kids. And we know that with a teacher in there facilitating, Apex can work pretty well, but it's still, again, a self-paced program and it's on a computer and it's kind of dull and it's really of one note. Um, the depth of knowledge that Apex goes to is not even, um, there's not a, even much variety in there to address all the learning styles and things that our students come to us with. So we do it to address gaps. We do it to differentiate because that's what students need. We have to differentiate. Um, people learn differently, you know, and people don't learn like we learn. We have to always remember that. Um, Google assignments are great things to use. Those are just things you can do. You can teach a lesson live. You can take students on a field trip. You can bring in a speaker. You can complete a book study. You can complete a community project. Wonderful replacement ideas um, that can enhance the student's learning. It could increase their attendance. You could, you know, show them something they've never thought about before. You know, open their horizons. So. Um, now the slide isn't moving forward. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Maybe it froze. It's frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, and it's eight minutes. I'm gonna wait till we go. So. I, I, oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. These are examples of differentiation. And this is a tool that it's just a good concept model for integrating technology in your classroom. Um, so we follow the same model. Just want to think about how you're integrating technology. It's the way of the future. We can't avoid technology. So our students need to learn using technology because their jobs will use technology. So even if you're a hold off, like I'm not a huge, I don't like love technology, but I embrace it because I know we need to. It's, uh, it's really, we're to that point now. So we've got to um, teach our students how to use it to enhance their learning. And that. All right, there's Google training. I feel like I'm just slamming you guys with all these different things. I feel, um, so it's a lot okay so i want you to just make sure you're taking things and stride in one bite at a time yeah. um but we do do google training there's resources here we would love for all of our teachers to get google level one certification if you do um you go through this training site there's all the resources you would need it's a test you actually take online through Google and you sign up um, on your own. So we will pay the um, cost of the test and the certification, it's $10, but we will pay for that. So if you're interested in that, um, just you know access these resources. And if you're a professional teacher, you can also earn PD hours for going and getting that Google training. Um, these are the universal resources that we all, um, have access to. So, and this is what me and Emily have been working really hard on, um, just trying to get access to all these and to all the people that need them. And we're getting somewhere this week, we've made a lot of headway. <laughs> so we all have single sign-on service from Clever and that just provides this way for students to get to all the apps. It's a really quick one way. It saves them from signing on to multiple platforms and it helps us filter what things they can go to. Now they can always go to anything on the web, but I think if we train them to go in through Clever, it might help reduce their um, outside searching and, and things on websites they shouldn't be on. 
um, but they all have IXL for progress monitoring and diagnosing specific reading and math interventions that might be needed. Um, Apex, we have the Google Suite, so all the Google tools we, we rely on heavily. Um, we all have Edpuzzle, which is great for differentiation and building replacement lessons. We have Kahoot for, you can use that for anything. You can make quizzes with that. You can do daily purpose point fun things. Um, yeah, you have Kahoot. Desmos is a great math resource. Emily showed you that earlier. And then uh, MindPlay is a reading intervention program for only the intervention students that have reading or English goals. Um, so that's for a specific group of students. And then Scholastic Magazines, almost all the schools have magazines in their classrooms. Um, and those have been working out great. We do want, I mean, not only, um, it's not only technology, we need a variety. So I love to see things on the table, magazines and all that. These resources are also approved for you to use. Most of them are free. Um, and there are some that have costs associated with them, which if you want to, you can click on this survey and use that to request a resource that costs money if you want to try to purchase something outside of what we're already providing for you. So you click on that survey. Um, we'll work on trying to get that. <laughs> um, this is just some tips on um, Google Classroom best practice. Sorry, that's my slide. If you want me to say anything, I just talked. Well, about I mean, you could. We only have three minutes, Aim. So I'm, I'm thinking we're. I'm going to close it up. So yep. you can say something about it. Go nope, ahead. I got nothing else. Read the oh, slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just good, good tips for no, name. I can't say words today. Naming conventions. It's right there. I was going to call it nomenclature or something like that. Nice. Okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> tips for setting up your Google Classroom. And Amy's really the one to ask. Hey, so, Ali, um, Mr. Ryan raised his hand. Okay. A question, types of the stuff that we can have access to. Um, is there anything that gives us access to like the Ohio, the Ohio uh, library digital um, area? So like if kids want to take books digitally through the Ohio servers? You know, Mr. Ryan, I've never heard that, but that sounds wonderful. So it does. Send me some information about that, and I will find it because that sounds great. Yeah, honestly, All right, Mr. I'll Ryan, give you that look up. I think Thank it's you. free, and I think we can probably. Like, yeah, that's an awesome idea. I'll just that get it something like JSTOR. I didn't catch. Oh, like JSTOR. Um, oh, no, but yeah, let's talk about it off this call, and I, I think we can check it out, okay. and we can get it going. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, we've got two minutes um, and right here starts Apex. This, it really probably takes us, I mean, a good half hour. All right. So what I'm going to do, and I'm really, I'm, I apologize. You know, me and Emily have uh, never done this before and a, a new teacher makeup. So we really had no gauge for how long or what to include. Um, and, but we are still here. And if you guys want to do another additional hour or something, a different day, we'd be more than willing to, to give you more detailed Apex work. So email me or Emily and just let us know if you need a more detailed and additional training. Um, but I'm gonna go all the way to the end, right? And there, there's actually some valuable things that I do wanna make sure you're aware of. Um, and I have, unfortunately, a hard stop right at three, which is one minute. I will probably leave. And Emily, if you want to keep talking a little bit, I'm not sure if you have to leave right at three as well. But I'm I don't have to leave right it. at three, but I, don't, I want to respect people's time. So I will yeah. okay. go over a lot. I'm out at 3.30. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was just, man, okay. The getting started. So if you guys are new, this was just our little list of things to kind of tackle. Um, make sure you start the resources on the intranet that you need. So, um, you know, the website, I like to start things in the drive to get um, quick access to them. 
and then um, come up with a survey or an activity to help building relationships with your students. I think that's so important to focus on. Um, and then work through a class in Apex, you know, as you are working with them. I'm sure you're probably already doing that. <laughs> and then if you want to work on your Google certification, you can start working on that. And then, like I mentioned earlier, take an EOC in your area. But please email and reach out to us. If you need an additional um, session with us, we can go through you know, the APEX slides and then there's some good classroom management tips as well. Um, so any last minute questions? I am so sorry for feeling so rushy. Um, but you, you honestly, you can ask me a question. Don't feel bad <laughs> if you have one. Okay. And I do appreciate you taking your time with us today. I hope it was beneficial. Um, reach out. Like I said, through email for anything. And I really try, we try to respond as quickly as we can. Um, we're super busy, but we still we try. We try. Okay. And I can't um, promise to make it down like those schools down in you know Dayton and Cincinnati and Hamilton. <laughs> That's quite a drive, you know, and me and Allie both have little kids, so we probably aren't going to make it down there all the time, um, like to Marshall and Cliff Park and Hamilton. But if you're, you know, anywhere from Columbus to Cleveland, it's really not that far for me to come visit you, right? So if you want me to come out for a day and sit with you, email me. I will put it in my calendar somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. So that's really not a problem, too. And a lot of these resources are on that site, but if a specific question i can show you where that or go over it i don't mind doing it as well um you know, so anything you need let us know and then amy can input in the chat tech questions feel free to message her she really is the tech person so there might be some things where i'm like yeah that's an amy kenyon question <laughs> but i'll try to find out who knows the answer for anything that you need it's so right so many times i'll ask amy if someone asks me something i'll go right to her so yeah, she's, she's amazing. So, all right. All right. Any last questions? To help you. Bye, Allie. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> bye. I'll stay on for a second. I'll stay nice on. Yeah, bye, That's Allie. Cool. All right. So, Hello. does anyone need anything? I don't have a hard stop. So, anything anyone well, wants to Before we you know, I was thinking about, you know, other, other things they can access, be it once we have, you know, Clever and everything else going up. And I've got two links of here, two things I just remembered offhand, you know. InfoLink Ohio and, and the Ohio link, which technically same thing but different. And as I mentioned, you know, JTOR, JSTOR, however it's pronounced, which I remember using a lot in college and some of the other schools in the area had access to something similar. I know Northwest, I keep forgetting the system Northwest does for connecting to uh, like a Hamilton County library system or something. I got to figure out what that is so you can, if I can get more information on it. Well, uh, and, you know, and yeah, the, anything you can find, throw my way. Um, and you know, the library systems are a really great resource. I remember when I was at Topath, Maine, before COVID, when I, was, when I was an English teacher, we used to have a representative from the public library come in and do just like book talks with the students. So they would bring like four or five copies of a few different books, and then they would just check them out to the students at the school. So I would love to become more connected with all of our public library systems, you know, if we could. So yeah, we're definitely yeah, looking to grow in that way. Information can help out. Even with stuff for students who like, well, I'm going CTE training. I won't need that. No, we got there are books and everything that'll help you with the certification. You're gonna have to get through that. 